All right, welcome to the North Carolina Plumbing Code class. So hopefully by now, you've been able to get one of these right here. It's the 2018 edition of the North Carolina Plumbing Code. Uh, this is actually the, as far as for um, commercial plumbing, okay? Uh, it used to be that this was the book that was needed for residential and commercial plumbing. It still deals a lot with a lot of stuff, and a good bit of this is exactly word for word uh, how the residential code still is. But they've actually taken the and said the, the the plumbing code for residential falls under the residential building code now, which is a much thicker book, and it deals with uh, uh, the residential aspect and side of things. This is the book that we are going to be going straight through, though. Uh, and then from time to time, I may pull out some things that might differ uh, between this book and what the North Carolina, uh, the building code book says as far as the plumbing section in there. So that's going to be a much thicker binder than this. Uh, you'll find a section in fuel gas code in there. You'll find uh, some mechanical stuff, some plumbing uh, section in there, uh, a good size section as far as uh, the the building part of it. Um but this is the one that uh, hopefully everybody's got. This is the one that the uh, Forsyth Tech Bookstore carries. So if you still have not received that, you can go to the Strickland Building Bookstore, get the 2018 edition of the North Carolina Plumbing Code. You are going to want to have this book. Uh, so uh, when you completing the Blackboard uh, quiz, so the, the first thing you're doing is you're clicking on the link to, to watch this video and then I'm going to cover the chapter two and, de and definitions. Then you'll click on and take that chapter two quiz. So um, yeah, it's just going to be, uh, you'll be a lot more successful on the quizzes. And then you're, you're familiarizing yourself too with it, with this as we go through it. So I'm hoping that you're taking this book. Uh, you've got, and if you're going to make any notes, please make those notes on a separate pad of paper. Uh, they do not want you to take notes in this book. You're going to go to take your state exam one day, hopefully, for those who want to get their plumbing license. And if you're still using the 2018 edition of the North Carolina Plumbing Code, uh, you cannot have notes written in the margins. You can't circle things, underline things. The only thing you can do in here is highlight. If you want to have something marked, you have to highlight it. So for any notes and stuff, you might want to just make those on the side, okay? Okay. Um, so as you go through this, just kind of how it's, uh, laid out a little bit here. Um, the very first one, in, you know, it kind of gives just a, a little bit. So, uh, which I'll come back and read as we jump into here, but it goes and gives a little, uh, highlight for the different chapters, uh, under Roman numeral 10 is where that starts. Chapter one, the scope and administration, um, I'm going to let you go through, and if you want to on your own for uh, some good uh, sleeping uh, reading, you can go through and read that. Uh, and then we're going to pick up with chapter two, okay? Uh, over on Roman numeral 15, page 15, is the table of contents for the code. Uh, you're going to find this helpful as we come back and as we go through the code book the second time. As you're trying to locate things in the code book, using this table of contents and um, is gonna you're gonna find it real really helpful. Just the way things are, are broken down uh, between the different chapters. So if we were uh, if we were trying to find something uh, dealing with the water uh, supply system, um, you just look over, kind of look at your main titles there and go over, and you'll be like, oh well, there's there's one that talks about chapter six, water supply and distribution. Uh, so use that table of contents and finding information. Like I said, this first time going through it, uh, we're just going to kind of go straight through, highlight some things that I've, that we found to be important. Yes, there's more important stuff that I'm not, you know, th that's in the book that I want you to know, but, um, I'll kind of make, really make some note of, uh, what's going to be on your quiz as well. Some things I want you to, to put to memory. Okay. So we're going to start with chapter two definitions. But just uh, seeing what the book says about chapter two, on Roman numeral 10, it says chapter two definitions. Uh, chapter two is the uh, repository of the definitions of terms used in the body of the code. 
Codes are technical documents, and every word, term, and punctuation mark can impact the meaning of the code uh, text and the intended results. The code often uses terms that have a unique meaning in the code, and the code meaning can differ substantially from the ordinary, ordinarily understood meaning of a term as used outside of the code. The terms defined in Chapter 2 are deemed to be of prime importance in establishing the meaning and intent of the code text that uses the terms. The user of the code should be familiar with and consult this chapter because the definitions are essential to the correct interpretation of the code and because the user may not be aware that a term is defined. Where understanding of a term's definition is especially key to or ne uh, necessary for understanding of a particular code provision, the term is shown in italics, wherever it appears in the code. This is true only for those terms that have a meaning that is unique to the code. In other words, the generally understood meaning of a term or phrase might not be sufficient or consistent with the meaning prescribed by the code. Therefore, it is essential that the code defined uh, meaning be known. Guidance regarding tense, gender, and plurality of defined terms, as well as guidance regarding terms not defined in this code, is provided. Okay, so they're just saying, hey, these are some definitions that in order to properly be able to uh, discern what the code intent is and what they want us to do, here's some terms that we really want you to know uh, because it could affect its meaning. Um, so as we go and some of the very, ver very first things that we're going to get into chapter two and that you might even want to remember for a quiz, uh, it's like saying as we get further into the code and maybe we're installing a, a jetted tub in someone's bathroom and it says that we have to be able to have access to the pump. Um, there is, there is a definition for what does that really mean? Uh, what does it mean to be able to consider that pump accessible? And then there's also some items in the code that says uh, we need these devices to be readily accessible. And they distinguish between having access to something and having readily ready access to something. So these are some terms that we need to know in order to be able to uh, properly uh, cipher the code and uh, to be able to where we're plumbing correctly. So let's go ahead and jump into it. You've got your code book. you got a notepad or some paper or something or a bow jungles napkin that you're going to take some notes on. Got something to write with. And we're going to start on page five, chapter two, definitions. OK, uh, I'm not going to read every one of these. OK, it wouldn't be a bad idea for you to go through and end up filling in and kind of just read uh, reading through the whole chapter. Uh, I'm going to highlight some and pick some out that. Uh, um, that you're going to maybe be seeing more frequently um, to where you know what these terms are, okay? I'm going to let you read that first section 201, that general information. I'm going to let you uh, read that on your own, and we're going to start with section 202, general definitions. And, hey, right, one of the very first ones that we're going to talk about, access to something. Uh, it says that which enables a fixture, appliance, or, a can or equipment to be reached by access or by a, uh, a means that first requires the removal or movement of a panel, door, or similar obstruction. Okay, so if if we did say that uh, that pump needed to be accessible, we could still cons consider accessible if we uh, maybe had to uh, remove a panel, open a door. Uh, something that where we could then remove that and then get to the pump and was able to have enough room to pull it in and out. And then it refers us to says see ready access. So if we wanted to go ahead and just flip ahead and see what that said, if you go to uh, flip over to the R's for ready access on page 11, this says... Uh, that which enables a fixture, appliance, or equipment to be re uh, directly reached without requiring the removal or movement of any panel, door, or similar obstruction, and without the use of a portable ladder, step stool, or similar device. So maybe if we had a basement 
and uh, something was coming in and the line went up and we said, oh, well, that valve needs to be, uh, we need to be able to have ready access to that. You say, oh, well, we don't have any panel around it. It's all open. But if they're not able to reach up and grab that, we first had to uh, to throw out a, a step stool or ladder. Um, that is not considered it. So because it says without the use of a portable ladder, step stool, or similar device. So there's there's your difference between the uh, access and ready access. And you may want to you may want to remember that for the quiz. So take take a note on that one. Okay. Let's uh, we'll continue on. Go back to the A's on page five. Uh, so in having an access cover, uh, that would just be something, uh, some removable plate, something that we could pop off um, to where we can get to get to something that we need and having an access cover. Uh, adapter fittings. And when we get into uh, some of the some water piping fittings, um, going over even some of the drainage fittings. So if you had an adapter, maybe um, maybe we want to go from copper, uh, from changing material from a copper to a PEX. We, we might tell the supply house to order that up. We say we want a half inch copper to PEX adapter. Uh, maybe we're going from PEX to CPVC. So I'd say oh, I want a half inch CPVC to PEX adapter. Uh, and then you could you could be more specific in it saying, do I want a female thread adapter? Uh, do I want a male threaded adapter? And we will cover all those when we get it. But we're adapting one thing to an, uh, to something else. OK, uh, air mittens valve. We talked about these um, the other day when we were drilling up the house. We were saying, hey, on this fixture, we can get an actual vent to go out. And then we said on the kitchen sink, remember that half wall that was there? We said, hey, it's just not a great place. We, we can't get a vent out on this. So, but it has to be vented. So we're going to use an air admittance valve. It's a one-way valve designed to allow air to breathe into the system, but then it will shut back off, preventing the sewer gas from coming back out into uh, to the residents of the building. Uh, and I'm, uh, you can read that word for word if you want to. Um, I'm not going to, I won't do that. Okay, difference between air break and air gap. I'll draw you some pictures. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, so the definition is not even a thousand words, so, but here's a picture for it. Difference between an air gap and an air break. Actually, you probably have an air, bre uh, air break in your house in the washer location. You'll have something that's called a standpipe. Now, in your house, you might have just a pipe that's strapped to the wall of the basement or something if, if your washer and dryer is down in an unfinished basement. So it might be as simple as a, a, a piece of pipe there. If it's uh, into a finished room, you might have something that's like a washer box. So drywall all around, but a box around it. Might have your, your water valves here, hot and cold water valves with some shutoffs on top of those, and then a hole in it. Uh, when you take the drain line of your clothes washer and drape it up over into this pipe, that is called an air break. So it's not tied up directly. You don't glue the pipes together. It's just hanging over there. But we call it an air break when this indirect line, so it's not tied indirectly, it's indirectly tied into the system, is, well, there's a P-trap. Down below it, when it's when the indirect line goes below the flood level rim. Flood level rim is going to be the area where the water will back up and flood the house. Okay, the flood level rim. You have if you got a sink here. Let's just say you got a sink. The sink has a flood level rim. If this was the sink. And so as the water came out and filled up the bowl, at the area right where it's going to come out and fill up the bowl and flood the house, that is called the flood level rim, FLR, flood level rim. And hopefully you all can make that out. It looks a little small on my screen, but maybe when you blow it up, you can see it. Flood level rim. Okay, so the discharge line's below the flood level rim, but above the trap weir, the weir of the trap. Oh, so just some definitions here. 
the bottom part of all this trap is called the dip of the trap. The whole upper part is called the crown of the trap. Okay. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll get into traps in a minute here. But uh, this part right here, right at the bottom of the, the crown, the bottom part of the pipe, is called the crown weir. Um, I know normally you would say I before E except after C, but in the English language, there's all sorts of extra, uh, exceptions and neighbor and way and weir. Okay, there's some of your exceptions. A weir of the trap is right there. So when it discharges below the flood level rim, but above, draw a straight line across from there, but above the trap, the weir of the trap, we call that air break. Okay, air break. Now an air gap is going to look a little bit different. Now it still discharges indirectly into the drainage system. Okay, but this time instead of it discharging below the flood level rim, maybe here comes your pipe where everything, the water is draining through here and coming out here. Uh, and it's going to drain into a floor drain or something, something or a uh, waste receptor. And then we got, a, we got a pea trap underneath that. Let's just picture that as a floor drain. So, but here we've got between the end of the indirect waste pipe and the floor is called, uh, there's actually a gap here. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. So if there's an actual physical gap, we're going to call that an air gap. Okay. There's, there's the difference of the two there. Okay, you have air breaks and air gaps as related to the drainage system, and they also show air gap as for the water distribution. If you picture the faucet up there, the end of the faucet in the in the sink, the flood level rim of that sink is the air gap for the water distribution system. Uh, it talks about making an alteration to something. You probably ought to, that'd be good to read. Um, let's skip on down to anti-siphon. What does anti-siphon mean? Maybe you've heard of siphoning something. Maybe you've actually even done some siphoning yourself. Uh, hopefully you, you don't do that out of my gas tank the way gas prices are. Um, but, you know, you can siphon something. Uh, maybe some of you have fish tanks at home and you've used just even like a little simple tube with a little bubble you bulb you squeeze. If you can get the water flowing and then you take the one end of the hose and stick it lower than the other, um, it, it will continue to flow. It's, it's, it creates a siphon. Um, so if you just had a tube, you could stick it over into a source of liquid, water, whatever, gas, whatever, and you were to suck on the one end to where it's sucking it enough to get the water, uh, the water flowing and then put the end of that tube lower than your source, it's going to start to si siphon. Anti-siphon, meaning anti is against Siphonage is going to try to something that's going to try to break that siphon. It's a, it's a term applied to valves or mechanical devices that eliminate siphonage is anti-siphon. Uh, you may want to remember that term for the quiz. Okay. Uh, it talks about something being approved or not. You know, is it acceptable to the code official or other authority having juris jurisdiction for compliance with the provisions of the applicable code or reference standards, meaning this, this is something that's approved. Uh, let's see. Let's look at backflow. Uh, backflow in the drainage, backflow in the water distribution, meaning that you have a reversal of the flow in the drainage system. We have what's called backwater valves that we have to put in, the, in there. And uh, let's just actually... Flip the page over to page six and we'll read about them. Um, Backwater valve. Basically, what that is is a check valve. And we have some, some for demonstration purposes in the classroom. And you may even see them out there on the job. You might be even putting some in. But what it says, and you say, well, when am I going to see it? What is it? It's a device or valve installed in the building drain or sewer pipe. So it's the main drain heading out of the building or a house uh, where a sewer is subject to backflow and that prevents drainage or waste from backing up into a lower level 
or fixtures and causing a flooding condition. So we're going to, later in chapters ahead, we're, we're going to read more about backwater valves, but this is basically just telling you what it is. <laughs> You'll say, well, my goodness, when are we going to get a uh, back, you know, drainage, everything flows downhill. How are we going to get something back and back, flowing backwards? Well, it could if we've got a stoppage in the line. So let's just picture this as a main sewer line that runs. Uh, a lot of times they'll just right, run right down the middle of the, the road. And what you'll see up at the road height, now the road's going to be level, but underground, the drainage is, is sloped. And you'll see periodically manholes, manholes up in the street. So this is the street. So underground, there's piping under there. This is sewage lines. This is going to be a manhole. Now, every so often, they'll have these manholes to access this sewer. Now, let's go build a house in between here. We just built a nice little house. All right. Here's our door. Got some pretty little windows. Oh man, we'll even make a little chimney for them. There's the smoke going out. It's cold outside. There we go. All right, so we ran the plumbing in the in the house. The drain we ran the drain along under the ground, and we came down and we tied into this main sewage line that runs up into the house. Okay. Catches all our bathrooms and kitchen sink and laundry and everything else ties to there. And there's the main line running out. So what you do, though, is sometimes you might not be, uh, the street might not be sitting on flat ground. Uh, the road might even be slanted a little bit. You need to know which way the sewer is running. This one, it's easy because I drew it really steep. I, you can see that everything is flowing in this direction. When you come out to check to see, do you need a backwater valve? You're going to look at the upstream manhole. Since everything's flowing this way, you look at the upstream and say, is the upstream manhole higher or is it lower than our floor level of the house? Okay. If the upstream manhole is lower than the floor level of our house, we do not need a check valve in the line. Okay. We don't put one in or a backwater valve. Um, if the manhole is higher, then we do want to put one in. If you, water's going to seek its own level, okay? And then it's going to come out the lowest point first. If we got a blockage in the drain, in the, out there in the sewage system, there's our big fuzzy blockage, okay? Whatever is blocking it. Every house up there, it's going to run down and it's going to start to back its way up. Okay, the line. As things back up, it's going to start to back up yours up towards your house. Okay, and then it's going to back up this way, and then it's going to start to back up these toward these manholes as the water level gets up, goes higher. If the if our house is the low point, all that sewage is going to be just dumping into your house. Everybody up here is continues to flush their toilets. And here they come, and it has nowhere to go because it's stopped up. So it comes up and comes out where it can come out. And if your house is the low point, it all is going to come into your house. And you're just sitting there saying, please make it stop, make it stop. But it doesn't stop because they don't know there's a problem. They're like, I flush my toilet, and it's going somewhere. So I keep using my toilets, and I keep taking my shower, and I keep letting my laundry go and everything else. And it's making a huge mess in your house. If you need one of these, it is a good idea to have one of those in there uh, because it can protect you from a bad day. Um, I had someone following a couple years back that uh, gave me a call uh, right after the first part of the year. They were hosting a, a Super Bowl party at their house and it just happened that uh, they were the low people on the line and there got to be a clog downstream. And during their big Super Bowl party, 
here it all comes bubbling out of their shower drains and out into their floor and coming down across their floor. Uh, Super Bowl party ended a little bit sooner than they wanted. Every, all their guests left and headed out. They did not have a backwater valve on their house, and they sure did wish they had one. It was a messy situation. Backwater valves. Okay. Let's see. Let's jump on down to a ba what a bathroom group talks about. It's a group of fixtures consisting of a water closet. That's what, uh, what we plumbers call toilets or water closets. Lavatories, which is uh, most people are going to say it's the bathroom sink. We call them lavatories. The bathtub or shower, which we as plumbers call those bathtubs and showers. Uh, and then including or excluding a bidet. I don't know how many of you know what a bidet is. Um, so I, a lot of them are using bidet seats now. You can convert your regular toilet into a bidet. It's got a source of water, tempered water, uh, uh, meaning just, just warmed up so it's not shooting you with a blast of cold water, but a way of rinsing uh, yourself off. Uh, and a lot of your nicer ones have got uh, air functions on them to where they'll blow dry you and everything else. So um, uh, it could be nice. But a bidet is a standalone when it's it's a little wash by itself. Uh, let's see. What else? An emergency floor drain or both. Such fixtures are like located together on the same floor level. If you put all the group of those fixtures together, we're going to call it a bathroom group. Uh, when we talk about a battery of fixtures, it's not the battery that you put in your flashlight or the battery that's in your vehicle. It's a battery meaning a group of fixtures side by side. So if you go into a commercial uh, setup or you go to the bathroom at school down the hall, you're going to see toilet, 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 or water closet, water closet, water closet, you know, that's, uh, and they're all lined up. We call that a battery of fixtures. Okay. What's a branch? Let's skip down to branch. Any part of the piping system except a riser, the main or a stack. A riser is going to be something that goes vertical. A stack is a general term for a piece of pipe that goes vertical. And then the main is the bit, the main is the trunk line. So you picture it like a, a you know a tree or something. You got you got the main part of it, and then you got all these branches coming off of it. So they say, what's the general term branch? What does that mean? Now there's specific branches, but if we got the general term branch, is any part of the piping system except the riser, the main, or the stack, a branch. You may want to remember that one for the quiz. Hint, hint. Okay. Branch intervals. It's the distance along the solar way stack. And as we get go, you know, further over, we're going to talk about what's what's solar, what's solar and way stack. What is the difference between a soil and waste? Uh, those are in definitions too. Um but it's, it's generally referred to a story height between one floor level and the other floor level, but it can't be less than eight feet. No less than eight feet is considered a branch interval. The building drain. The building drain, skip on down to that one. It's the lowest part of a piping uh, of the drainage system, and it receives the discharge, discharge from soil, waste, and other drainage pipes and it extends 10 feet beyond the exterior wall of the building. The building sewer is, is what it, the term changes and becomes the building sewer. So let's look at this real quick. Here's our house. Okay, right? All this piping that goes into the house and catches everything in there. So you got the main part. It comes out. When you come outside of the building, 10 feet. Okay. From 10 foot out and into the house is called the building drain is the inside part, okay? From here on out, where our connection is to here, is going to be called building sewer. The building sewer is that part right there. And so when we talk about it later on, you'll know what we're talking about when it says, what's the minimum size of a building sewer? You'll say, oh, well, I know that's from 10 foot on out. That's where it's minimum sized. And we're going to talk about built minimum sizes and different things as far as the, the building drain. Okay. Let's see. Let me do it on time. Uh, any part of the building sub drain is any portion of the drainage system that does not 
flow by gravity. So you might go, maybe, maybe even your house has it. Uh, see this one, the house is higher than the, than the sewer connection. So everything's able to flow by gravity. Okay. Everything needs to keep flowing downhill. But how about you, maybe you have a basement that's a hole in the ground and you're like, but my basement, I want, I want a bathroom down there, but there's no way of getting things. It's not going to flow by gravity because the sewer connection is higher than my basement level. So how am I going to get that to hook up? Well, that part is called, if it can't flow by gravity, it's called the building subdrain. And all that drainage flows together and is going to flow into some type of tank. And that tank is going to have a pump in there, which will pump your sewage up to get it to a height to where now it can flow by gravity back down into uh, the sewer. Okay. Oh, we will talk more about you. We'll, we'll cover some of the others as we go further, but I'm just not going to hit them just yet. You can end up reading it. Uh, what cisterns are and everything else. Clean outs. Clean out is a access opening to the drainage system. And we'll talk about, well, when do you have to have uh, a place to access the drainage system? I want to, like a clean out plug, a removable plug or cap, some way to, to remove it. To clean out the line, if you get a, a blockage, it's called a clean out. Um, and we'll get, I'll talk more about common vents before long. Uh, we're going to have a day where we sit down in the classroom. I'll go over venting methods and we'll talk about individual vents, uh, common vents, uh, wet venting, stack venting, vertical wet venting, all those, and really explain those more in detail. Uh, the continuous waste. Continuous waste. Where you'll typically see this, a continuous waste, a drain from two or more similar adjacent fixtures connected to a single trap. Two or more uh, connected to a single trap. You can look underneath your kitchen sink and see if you got one of these setups because they're going to say if you have a double bowl sink, you say, oh, side by side, similar fixtures here, okay? Side by side. Look under your kitchen sink and see if they don't do something like this. One drains to the other that goes through both of these going through a single trap. Now, not you don't have to plumb it that way, but often it will be. Maybe the two come together in the middle and have the, tr the trap. Um, but having the two similar ones going through a trap, we call that. Right there, that's that piping configuration, a continuous waste system. Okay. Uh, a cross connection. Um, we want to be real careful of cross connections. It's a physical connection arrangement between two otherwise separate piping systems, one of which contains potable water and the other either water of unknown or questionable safety or steam, gas, or chemical, whereby, or whatever, and where uh, the flow from one system to the other with the direction of the flow depending on the pressure differential between the two systems. Uh, so, and we don't want to create cross connections, okay, to where one, it says it's a known potable water source. Potable, if you flipped over to your P's, it's basically water that's been treated and it is tested and known as safe for drinking. Okay. So if you're on county water, city water, they, they'll go through and treat that water and they send it out and saying, Hey, this is safe for drinking. Now it's got certain um, limits and levels of different things that might could be in the water. Um, but they've deemed it safe for drinking called potable or potable water. Um, now, maybe you're on a well, okay? A well is a private source of water. You just drilled a hole in the ground, got some water, but you don't know the quality of the water. I mean, the, the water quality level could be much better than it is for, that you're getting from uh, the city or the county, but we don't know that. It might have some uh, real high mineral contents in it. It might, might be uh, some different things, There's a lot of iron, you know, it, uh, you know, different things might be in there. And you say, well, hey, I, I really want to kind of treat this water to get it out. But it's your private source. The city is not going to come in and say, well, let's test your water for you to make sure it's uh, safe um, um, or, or your county water. 
you know, most of this, your cities are, they, they've, they're all going to have theirs and they're not drilling wells there. But if you get further out into the county, um, if they haven't brought county water that far yet, they're, you're going to start to get into uh, people having to drill wells to get their water. But maybe you had a well there. And then the county brings water on down and says, hey, we're going to we're going to start. We're going to pay this road. We're going to put fire hydrants down there and we're going to everybody's going to have access to water. You say, oh, great. Well, time to hook me up, because every time I lose power in the house, I, uh, you know, when my pump to my well doesn't have power, I lose my water, too. But now if I'm on county water, if I lose power. I might not be able to have my water heater because I got electric water heater, so I don't have electricity to heat my water, but at least I still have cold water coming in and I've got water. So they say, yeah, let's go ahead and run some of that. But now you got, you have uh, county water and you have, um, and you've got your well water. Uh, you, you don't want to create a cross connection between a, a known source that they say is known potable water and then the unknown source that you they would have to treat. We don't want to tie those two together, okay? So, and we'll talk about different things you can do. But if you tie them together, it's called a cross connection. A dead end, any part, any any line that you're going to come over and you cut it off and you capped it. If it's over, you cap that line and it's over two foot long, we call it a dead end. Okay, dead end. Oh, let's see. Jump on down to developed length. The length of a pipeline measured along the center line of the pipe and fittings. It's called developed length. Okay. So, you've got to measure it along the center line of the pipe and fittings. So let's just say a pipe runs this way. We put it off 45 degree and go over here. And then we go over to here. Okay. If we say there's a maximum distance on this pipe, all our distances are measured by developed length from center of the pipe, center of the fittings from here to here, not point A to point B. If we said there's a maximum distance from this place to this place, we got to measure the center line, not straight line. We do not do that. This one here, center line is called developed length. You might want to remember that one for your quiz, okay? Make a note of what is developed length. Oh, let's see. Uh, drainage on page eight, drainage fixture unit, and we'll talk more about, and we'll often refer to them as DFUs, drainage fixture unit. Uh, it's a, it's a, um, a measure of the uh, probable discharge into the drainage system. And we use those values to often generate pipe sizes. Say, well, how big of a pipe do we need here? We'll say, well, how many DFUs are on that pipe? So as we get further into it, basically the, the where that used to begin with is just to say, okay, we're going to take a bathroom sink and determine that, that we're going to give that a value of one one DFU for that bathroom sink or that lavatory. Um, basically, your residential water closets are worth three. And everything else residentially, uh, kitchen sinks, bathtub, shower, um, clothes washer connections, all that stuff is going to be worth two DFUs. So as we start to calculate piping, we're going to be adding values together to determine pipe sizes. But that's called a drainage fixture unit. OK. Uh, let's see. I'll let you read some of the I mean, there's other a lot of these other ones are good, too. It's uh, knowing what what's the difference between a drinking fountain and a water cooler? I mean, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, we got a drinking fountain down the down the hall. But what they really mean is we have a water cooler uh, down there. So you can read definitions and find out what, what's what's really the difference between that. Um I want to know what a fill valve is. It's good, good to know what fill valves are. Okay. Fixture branches, a drain serving two or more fixtures that discharges to another drain or to a stack is called a fixture branch. It's picking up two or more fixtures. Um, a fixture drain is from the trap of a fixture to a junction with any other drain pipe. Is just called a fixture drain. 
I'll let you skip a couple down there. We've already talked about flood level rim. I, and I drew the picture many, many, uh, saying what the flood level rim was. Flush valves. Uh, gray water. What is gray water? Water discharge from lavatories, bathtubs, showers, clothes washers, and laundry trays. We'll call that and refer to that as gray water. Uh, a semi-clean water coming to, out, out of there. Okay, horizontal pipe. This is a good one to, to know. What what is what is horizontal pipe? So let's just pretend this let's pretend this was, or let's take this line here. Okay, let's just say this is perfectly level, and this is perfectly straight up and down. In this, uh, if we were going to mark all these off in deg uh, degrees, and we said, oh, let's just say that's 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, and then 360, okay? And particularly like some type of, type of rows there. But, okay, so if we said, if this was going vertical up this way, and we, and we said, okay, let's split that 90 on a 45 and kicked it right through the middle of that going at 45 degrees. And then we'd say is a 40, this is, if this goes vertical and then we put an offset on it of, of a 45 degree bend. Okay. Everything, including the 45. Okay. It includes the 45 from here to here and the 45 degree this way from here including the 45 there all of this pipe in here is considered vertical okay everything from here down is this is horizontal pipe Horizontal, horizontal. The thing to remember, the 45 degree, that includes the 45 degree, is considered vertical. That will be important for us to remember as we start to say when, at what point can I uh, to, can I do an offset? Because uh, there's certain places that we've got to keep our vi pipe vertical. We have to keep it vertical. We can't lay it down horizontal, but we can put a 45 on it and say, I'm getting it out of the way. I'm shooting over here, but I'm still considered vertical. So we'll, we'll talk more about that as we get into other areas. But it's important to know what's the difference between horizontal and vertical pipe. Hot water. Uh, by term, a water temperature greater than 110 degrees. 110 degrees Fahrenheit is hot water. Uh, so yeah, I got my wife on this when I, we got a hot tub and stuck it out on the back deck. And had it out there, and man, I cranked that the heat up on that thing, and uh, you know, kind of maxed out about 104. Um, so I went to get in, and it took me a minute for my body to get used to that. It was, it was, it was pretty toasty. It, it, it's surprising. Every degree above uh, your body temperature really seems like a difference. It seemed quite a difference between 101 degrees and 104 degrees. Just three degree difference it felt quite a bit of difference. So 104 degrees, and my wife comes out there, and she's like, hey, is it hot? And me being the plumber knows that no, and nothing, anything from 110 below is not considered hot water. So uh, I would have to, I had to honestly tell her, no, it's not hot. And she jumped in and then wanted to beat me up uh, over this because uh, she was didn't last long before she had to ease into it, said, you said that wasn't hot. And so I had to let her know uh, by chapter two definitions, hot water is 110 degrees uh, or, or more is the definition for hot water. So uh, there we have it. Uh, she, she couldn't accuse me of lying to her. Indirect waste pipe. And that's what we piped and we showed the indirect waste pipe is like on your clothes washer where you took that drain and hooked it over, didn't glue it in solid. We call that an indirect waste pipe. Individually venting, a pipe installed to a vent, a fixture uh, trap, and that connects with the vent system above the fixture uh, served or terminates in the open air. Individual vent, I'm going to, like I told you before, with the common vent, I'm going to cover those and draw pictures and 
And you'll you'll plumb up some of those when we we're doing that house. Okay. Let's look at. They talk about on page ten what's actually considered lead free. So if if they say lead free, does that mean there is no lead in it at all? Well, no. They give you a certain percentage. It can't be a uh, weighted average of 025 percent lead, uh, not more than that, to be considered lead free. We're talking lead free solder or flux. It's just 0.2 percent uh, with those. A me mechanical joint is a joint, maybe we use, uh, and I can show you these in the classroom, I'm joining from one material to another material. I'm going to like use a rubber, uh, kind of a, uh, a band that goes over there, and it's got some uh, hose clamps that go on, and you can tighten that down. We call that a mechanical style, like a mechanical joint. We talked about non-potable. We Well, we mentioned potable water being safe for drinking. Non-potable would be, well, what do you think that is? A water that's not safe for drinking, okay? Oh, let's see. An offset is an approved method. So maybe we're doing a pipe offset. It's a method you run in one direction. You're going to take it out of line with where you were heading, out of line with it, and then you're going to turn it back in line where you were heading. We're just going to call that an offset. We can use 45 degree offsets. We've got different fittings that turn different degrees, uh, 22 and a half degrees. We can put a 22 and a half degree offset on there. Or so forth. Okay. Let's see. Where are we at? Offsets, non potable offsets, pipe sizes. So there can be places where we're going to say uh, maybe we're sleeving a pipe and just we're just using a, another pipe as a sleeve. And it tells us, uh, and it says, oh, if you're going to put a sleeve, you got to be two pipe sizes larger. How do I know what two pipe sizes larger is? Well, here it lists all the pipe sizes. So if we're trying to sleeve a two-inch pipe and it says go two pipe sizes larger, well, we're going to go from two to two and a half and then three. So that would be two pipe sizes larger if we used a three-inch to sleeve for a two-inch. Two, one pipe size up, two and a half. Two pipe sizes up, three. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, appliances. It would be good to re read what's, what, what's the difference between an appliance and a fixture. So I'm going to let you find that out on your own and read those through. Plumbing fixture, plumbing appliances, uh, potable water. We talked about that. Ready access. We've already mentioned that earlier on when we're talking about having access to something. Let's see. Let me keep moving because I want to be able to go all the way through this chapter and do a quick review in our time that we have. Slope, page 12. And we're going to learn, we're going to go further in detail of this in the classroom. I want to make sure that everybody knows how to work slope problems. All our drainage pipes, they're going to have to have slope on them because we need to be able to keep things flowing downhill. So what is, what's the appropriate amount of slope? We'll talk about. But slope is the fall or pitch of a line of pipe in reference to a horizontal plane, straight level, horizontal plane. In drainage, the slope is expressed as the fall of in units vertical per units horizontal and percent for a length of pipe. So when we're talking about slope, how we'll express it when we talk about different sizes of pipe and what's the what's the appropriate amount of slope on that pipe. So we're going to have a, a piece of pipe that's going to have to have a little bit of fall on it. Okay, it's not running horizontally. And so what we look, here is the horizontal line. So pretend that that one's running perfectly level. Here comes our pipe, and we've got fall on this piece of pipe. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, slope is expressed in a, in a fraction amount how much per foot. Okay, so we're going to say if we traveled one foot this way, from here to here, if that's one foot, we're going to say, well, how much did it drop from here to here? How much did we drop in one foot? Okay. So a slope, it might say, if we just said, on a two-inch pipe, we need a quarter of an inch per foot. That would be how the slope is expressed on that pipe. And when we get further into it, We'll talk about the different size and how much they need. It might be an eighth of an inch per foot. It might be a sixteenth of an inch per foot. But off for a two-inch pipe, uh, 
we've got to have a quarter of an inch per foot. That means if we went one foot over, we've got to at least drop a quarter of an inch. If we go two feet over and add another foot onto that, we've got to drop another quarter for that foot. So if we went two feet, we're dropping two quarters. Two quarters of a, is a half an inch. So and, and so forth. And we'll just figure that. Three foot, three quarters, four foot, four quarters of an inch. With, uh, and that's how we figure slope. All right, let's see. And we talked about um, a stack is a general term for any vertical line or soil waste vent or inside conductor piping that extends through at least one story with or without offsets and as directly possible uh, to the open air. Let me see. I think, yes, you are going to want to remember that one for the quiz. Um, the stack. Okay. General term, vertical on a soil, waste, or vent in, uh, inside conductor that extends through at least one story with or without offsets as directly as possible um, to its vent terminal. Okay. Let's see. Then we had... We talked about traps earlier. We drew a picture of a trap. It's the purpose of that is to provide a liquid seal to prevent sewer emission into the building. And then we talk about what is the trap seal. Let me let me draw a quick picture of that. We do have just a few minutes. So if, uh, if this one is a P trap. Not because of what it's trapping. It's not necessarily supposed to trap P, but for its shape, if you turn that up, there is a P trap. If you open up uh, your sink cabinet, you should see something that's got a little dip down in there like that, and that is a P trap. Purpose of it being, here's your, let's just say there's the bowl of your sink. If you use water, it goes down the drain. It's going to come down through here. The water level is going to rise, and then it's going to run down the drain, okay? But when you're through with running your water, it's going to leave this little dip full of water. Okay, this is all going to stay with liquid in here. Okay, the purpose of that is to, uh, to provide this liquid seal. Because on this side of the system, that goes out to either your septic tank or the sewer. And those, both of those can smell rather terrible. Uh, and we don't want that sewer gas coming back up and go, coming out into the, to the house. Um, we don't want that smell in our house. Um, so we provide, we have traps on all our fixtures to, to keep a liquid seal there to prevent. So uh, what they call the trap seal, I talked about a few of the definitions. We said that this was called the dip. This part right here is called the top of the dip. This part right here is called, hey, you guessed it, bottom of the dip. Y'all are smart. Uh, bottom of the dip, okay? Dip, D-I-P, the little dip in it. Top of the dip, bottom of the dip. We call this the what? The crown. In this part right there, the crown weir. It's kind of weird uh, that they call it that way, but it's the weir. So the area that makes up the trap seal is between the weir of the trap, right up here, this level, if we were to continue that as a straight line across, and the top of the dip. It doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. If if we didn't ever use this in the, in the and it starts, the water starts to evaporate, evaporate, evaporate. It's going to get lower and lower and lower over time, and it evaporates. About, as soon as the water dips below the top of the dip, now we got a little gap here, and the, and the smell can come up through there, even if we have a little bit of water sitting in the bottom. So as soon as the water dips below the top of the dip here, which is right here, okay? So if I asked you what two places of a trap, parts of the trap make up the trap seal, you would say the weir and the top of the dip, okay? Between the top of the dip and the weir is the trap seal. That is trap seal, okay? That's the part of the liquid that's actually keeping the sewer gas out. And the purpose of the trap is to provide that trap seal. Uh, and then if you look, read in there, trap primers, 
if it's going to be a place where it's going to be subject to to evaporate out, we might put a primer in there, some way of being able to add water to the trap to keep that thing filled up. Okay. Uh, vertical pipe, we talked about that and showed you. Vertical includes the 45 degree. Um, waste. Waste is considered that water that does not contain, contain fecal matter. And if you're not familiar with fecal, the term fecal, poopy. All right, feces, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, you, it's it's. So if we said a waste pipe, the uh, a waste pipe does not connect to a toilet. Okay. If we have the term soil. Okay. And then let's see if we had that in here. Uh, I actually just would have skipped over it, but yeah, soil, soil stack or soil pipe back on page twelve. That uh, ties toilets together. Soil, the term uh, soil, it's got toilets on it. Waste does not. Okay, and we'll stop there. All right, you can re finish reading a few definitions after that, but I want to have a few, just a minute here to go over. Uh, here's the terms again that you're going to see on your quiz so that you're all right ready. So when you click begin your quiz for chapter two, you'll be all right ready to answer. It's going to be a true false quiz, and I'll have some of these. I cover ready access. Okay, what is ready access and access ready access? We covered anti-siphon. What does that term apply to? We talked about the general term branch. Branch. What is a branch? We talked about question four deals with uh, true or false about the junction of the building drain and building sewer. Where was the junction of those? And if you remember, we talked about that being 10 feet outside the building wall. We talk about developed length. Look at that term again, developed length. How do you measure that? We looked at the term potable water. Potable water. We also looked at the term hot water. You might find that on, a qu on your quiz here, hot water. Uh, and I was in hot water. Okay, the uh, question eight, the stack, the term stack, what does that refer to? And then the question nine deals with vertical piping, vertical. Know what the difference between horizontal and vertical is. And then the last one, just a 10 question quiz. The beauty of a 10 question quiz is doesn't take too, too long to go through. I mean, it's a fairly quick quiz. The drawback to a 10-question quiz is every time you miss one, it costs you a letter grade, okay? 10 points. You drop that, boy, 90. Well, I guess if you hit a 90, you're still, 90 still considered an A here. But um, any lower than that, you between 90 to 100 is an A, 80 to uh, 80 to 89 is a, B, is a B, and so forth. All right, and... The last one, oh, and go, you're going to have to go back and find this one on your own. Uh, difference between water service and water distribution. I did not cover that, but that's a one to find on your own. Water service and water distribution. Be careful with it. Where is the junction of that outside the building wall? Okay. So, you got everything you need to know. Go back through. You can finish reading the rest of the terms. Uh, it's where you feel like you, you've covered the whole chapter. Uh, those are some of the terms that I've just pulled out that uh, would be good for you to put to memory. But once you've got that down, once you've got it, kind of went back and found all those answers, click on the chapter two quiz, answer all 10 questions, true, false questions, and then make sure at the end to click save and submit. Okay. Don't just answer the questions and then get out of there. It will not record your grade. Once you click save and submit, make sure that you go over to my grades on the left and look and make sure that it gave you a score. And hopefully everybody that uh, watched this video that you get 100 out of that. So uh, another reminder, I've been sending out text reminders. And um, here's another reminder. Hopefully you're watching this video and that you remember to complete your entry assignment. You have to do that. They will put you out of class and it's a lot of, it's work for me, work for you, hassle and everything else to try to get you back into the class. So if you would like to stay in the class, 
make sure get your entry assignment completed. If you got any questions um, regarding it, please reach out to me. I am here to help you as much as I can. I can't help you if uh, if you don't want it. So make sure that you get it done. Um, and then I look forward to seeing those who are in the plumbing class. I'll, I'll see you there. I'll send out reminders as far as where we're going to meet. But um, hope you do well. If you got any questions, let me know. Till next time. See you then.